Welcome back to the Sunburst Podcast. We have a tangent episode for you today. We are joined by a special guest. Hey guys. Yeah. We do have Tristan with us again. And Tristan, since you're the guest, what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be t- discussing war movies. Yeah. Yes. Well, so we, we do have like Luke, Ray, and Tristan here life. with me. And we are going to be discussing our top three war movies of all time. Luke. You have somewhere to be in a few minutes, so would you like to go first and introduce your war, movie, war movies? Sure. Um, so I guess I'll go in order from my least favorite of the three to my favorite of the three. So these are my three favorite war movies. Number three is going to be Darkest Hour, which came out a couple years ago. Um, and it's of course, stars Gary Oldman as Winston Churchill. He won Best Actor for it. Very well deserved. A big fan of that movie. Um, Tyler, I think me and you went and saw that, actually. Um, but yeah, yeah. So Darkest Hour is going to be my third favorite. Then my second favorite is going to be Saving Private Ryan, which for a long time, this was my first favorite. But doing some recent thinking, um, it got swapped out for my next pick. But I'm, I mean, everybody loves Saving Private Ryan, right? I mean, I feel like this is going to be on a couple of your all's lists, too, if I was going to guess. but Probably all anyway. of them. Yeah, I'd yeah, it. yeah. But my favorite war movie is Hacksaw Ridge. Oh, I forgot about that one. And yeah, I'm Hacksaw Ridge is fantastic. It's probably it's my favorite really movie. Good. That, probably my f- favorite movie Mel Gibson's directed, I'd say. Um, which I mean, I didn't you know, know Mel Gibson directed that. He did. It was kind of like his comeback after all yeah. the uh, after all the not good things that he said. And did. <laughs> but um, taking all that aside, Hacksaw Ridge is really awesome. So I'm sure we'll talk about like more about our picks later. So if anybody else wants to just kind of throw theirs out there, they can. You um, know, Luke, that, I forgot one. about Darkest Hour. That one was pretty good. Oh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Tristan, you can go next. Okay. Um, well, I'll be honest with you. I don't watch a whole lot of war movies. Um, and like I've missed out on a lot of the big ones, especially recently. Like 1917, I'm slacking on. Dunkirk, Overlord. Um, Hacksaw Ridge. I haven't seen those, but I have a really, I have a fairly solid top three list. Number one, well, this isn't any particular order because I do love all these movies in different ways. But one, Saving Private Ryan. It's a classic. You gotta love every bit of it. Tom Hanks is amazing in it. Yada yada yada. Star Wars Rogue One. It's my second favorite war movie on this list. That's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah, I know Luke doesn't like it, so we'll just have to fight about it later. But it is that could be another that could be another good episode, Luke. It could (laughs) be. Um, Um, It is probably the one Star Wars movie that I could relate to being a war movie. All the other ones can't relate to it. Real quick, Tyler, you also like Rogue One. Rogue One is my favorite Star Wars movie. So Luke and I could go against you and Tristan because I also hate it. Like, it's so I've lost all respect. I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but it's the most overrated like movie oh. in general. Just about I, yeah, movie. I think it's overrated too. That's um, sad. Um, but number three on my list is Jojo Rabbit, which came out last year, or was it this year? I can't really remember. I think it was this year. It was uh, last year. Was it last uh, year? It was, it was like the end of last. Yeah, the end of last end year. Of last year. Yeah. And uh. I adore that movie. Me and my dad both love that movie. And I've seen it like three or four times. I haven't seen it. Oh, you're missing out. No, I, I haven't know, seen it either, too. honestly. <gasps> Alright, well, I'll I try not to spoil anything. The half. I know, I'll try not to spoil anything about it whenever I talk about it later. But I'll let somebody else go on their list. Uh, Tyler, you can go ahead. We'll save the best for last. Okay. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> um, so, my number three pick is Black Hawk Down. Solid. Solid. Very my good. Number, Very my good. number two yeah. pick is Dunkirk. Solid. And my number one pick is 1917. Man, I really need to see Solid. It. I've seen 1917. It's good. 1917 is really, really fantastic. I might we'll go watch it tonight. Later. I might go watch it tonight after this. It's really, really good, Tristan. It really is. The camera work really like just bakes the whole movie, honestly. Mm-hmm. You know what the gimmick is, right, Tristan? Yeah, no, yeah, it's like all one continuous shot. Yes. I'm so excited. So, mine is... I'll just rapid fire mine. My number one is Saving Private Ryan. My number two is Overlord. And my number Ooh. three is Fury. 
Overlord. Yeah, I definitely need to see Overlord. I was I was interested in it the moment I saw a trailer for it. Yeah, same. This trailer is so cool. And if I'm right, is Overlord directed by J.J. Abrams? That's produced by him. I don't think produced, it's directed produced, by him. Okay, produced. J.J. Abrams is like a bad taste in it. my mouth since The Rise of Skywalker. Right. Leave him alone. I won't leave him alone. <laughs> no, J.J. Abrams. You will atone for your sins. He did good. Okay, he did a good job on that movie, Tristan. He did okay. He could have done better. We'll talk about it another time. On our future episode. Yes. <laughs> so what movie are we going to talk about first? Uh, I was thinking we'll go with Luke's number three first. Luke's number three. Or we could do hour, Saving Private right? Ryan first, because like three of us have that one. I was going to say Saving Private Ryan, just because you three all do have it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Luke, you can kick us off if you'd like. Yeah, so um, as someone who has military in their family, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do too, um, I, I've heard from people who have served and stuff that have particularly, um, I've watched um, interviews and like read articles about people who actually served during World War II. And um, they said that the opening 20 minutes, which I think is the best part of the whole movie, um, I to agree. say it's like, yeah, to say it's um, like good in the sense that it's super well made and very realistic. It's not enjoyable to watch because it's so visceral, right? But um, I, I've just heard from people who've actually served in the war that that is like the most accurate depiction of actual combat in the battlefield in a movie that they've seen. Like I, I, I heard that like a lot of people who went and watched it that were veterans had to leave the theater because like PTSD and you know, being disturbed and stuff like that. Um, and that, that's sad that they had, you know, that much trouble reliving it. But at the same time, that's kind of a credit to the filmmakers because they put so much care into that opening. Uh, it's like the opening scene, but it's like 20, 25 minutes long. But yeah. they put so much care into it and made it so realistic that you can just really tell that they cared about what they were making, you know. Um, that honestly makes the entire movie. Like, after that, it's still really good and, like, Tom Hanks – character's awesome and the mission's cool and you really get to know these guys but um without the first 20 minutes i don't think it'd be on my list it'd still be like a contender but that first 20 minutes puts it over the top yeah it's one of like the most jaw-dropping first like opening scenes to any movie really there's just so like it's just it's like non-stop constant yeah. tension you know so tyler you're the yeah. only one out of us three that doesn't have this one on your list. Uh, I did because I knew that everyone else would, and I wanted to do something different. Respect, respect. Wow. So you Admiral do different. You do deep down like it? No, it, yeah, it's a, it's a great movie. I just didn't want to talk about it mainly because, <laughs> like, whenever anyone makes this list, that one's always at the top. So I just figured I'd be a little different with it. I mean, it really is. It, it deserves to be at the top, though. Yeah, it does. No, it, it, has, it has its reasonings for being in the top three. But it I, I, made I, it. I like your reasoning behind the reason that you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it almost made my number three, though. Almost. My favorite scene is the sniper scene, though. I love that scene. I like the I like the sniper scene. The sniper scene and the beach scene, honestly, like make the entire movie for oh, me. Yeah. I remember the first time I, I watched. Think I like it. the sniper scene more than the beach one. I think I do too. It's a it's a lot more tense, and I like, yeah. really? feel like I have to freeze up when I'm watching it. Um, I will say I one of my favorite parts. I, the first time I watched it, I was just like, I know Matt Damon is Private Ryan, so I wonder what dramatic way they're going to introduce him. And then they're just randomly in in the planes, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's Matt Damon. <laughs> that's the guy we're looking for. He's right there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Do you guys want to uh, talk about Overlord now? Please talk about Overlord, but try not to spoil anything, because I'm really, like, I really want to see it, but I never got around to it. So, so, Tristan, you want to know, like, the main reason Overlord's on my list? Why is Overlord on your list? It just... The moment I watched the trailer, and then after I watched the movie, I was like, 
dude, this is like if Nazi zombies was made into a movie. <laughs> and, and I mean, if you know me, you know that I love Nazi zombies. Nazi zombies. It's, it's my favorite mode to play on Call of Duty. It's, Call of Duty is my favorite game. Yeah, zombies is. And it's, and it's like they favorite. finally turned it into a movie, but <laughs> but it had the luxury of not being a terrible video game movie because it wasn't actually based off the game. Yeah. Yep. Because you know how like video game movies are normally terrible. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ch- check so. out my review for Monster Hunter that just came out, and you will you will see how. I actually watched it last night. That is. <laughs> see that movie is so bad. It's so bad. But that's that's a different topic. But yeah, video game movies don't normally work out. Yeah, except for Detective Pikachu. That yeah, that was, was pretty solid. That was pretty good. Yeah, Detective really Pikachu solid. was really really solid. Yeah. My favorite war movie, Detective Pikachu. <laughs> it, it almost made the cut for my list. <laughs> it just slightly got edged out. It was close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely need the Overlord. I'm definitely missing out on it. Yeah, I would definitely recommend. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say much more because I don't want to spoil it for you. Yeah, I understand. There's probably a lot of spoilers there, but um, yeah, it it's been on my list for a solid. When did it come out? 2018. I think. Yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I've been I saw it in theaters at Cinemark. God, what a traitor! Oh, oh did he? you yeah. saw it in theaters, Rick? Yeah, I did. Oh, I didn't know that. Traitor. Yeah. Did you just I'll rewatch it rec- recently or something? Uh, no. Whenever one of my friends was telling me like that war movies would be a cool episode, I, like this movie for some reason instantly popped into my head when I heard war movie. Uh, But yeah, uh, I kind of want to hear about Luke's third movie on his list because I've never seen that one. Oh, Darkest Hour? Yeah. It, it's awesome because, like, it's not a war movie. It is a war movie, but not in the traditional sense that, you know, there, there's really no action, right? Like, it's it all takes place, you know, from Winston Churchill's perspective. And, um, and Gary Oldman is just, like, fantastic in it. But it really got me interested in, like, british hit military history and showed how good of a leader winston churchill was and that's like something that i have no interest in i'm not a big history guy and i don't really know anything about that kind of stuff you know what i mean so especially not history especially not um like winston churchill or anything like i obviously knew who that was but this movie really got me interested in it and i think that's a lot for like a two hour and 15 minute long war drama period piece film and i was like 16 when i saw it so for that to kind of hook me in me being like a 16 year old kid who just wanted to see some action on screen i think it's really impressive and it really it really just kind of gets into the psychology of winston churchill right and it's just really awesome to to see it it makes history enjoyable coming from someone who's not a history buff but Um, yeah it was really good i the history part of it was really really cool and it's just, I mean, I always like to see a story where someone is, you know, j- kind of going against the grain because that whole movie, literally everybody else in this company is telling him, hey, yeah, let's not go against Hitler. Let's not, that might be a bad idea. <laughs> and he's just like, nope, Hitler's a horrible person and I'm going to do it anyway. And it's just really cool to I always like to see stories like that. Mm-hmm. Plus, I mean, like you said, it's kind of funny to see Gary Oldman, but like, I've got some friends that I know who saw that movie and they didn't realize it was Gary Oldman until I told him because he's so unrecognizable, you know? Yeah. I, um, I, I kind of want to see that movie, but I'm not, I wasn't really like sucked in whenever, even, even when Gary Oldman got put up for Oscar for that movie, I wasn't a hundred percent sucked into wanting to watch it. That movie is definitely like, like, like you see a movie where like people won't remember the movie in five years, but they'll remember the performance. That's kind of mm-hmm. what that is. It's like a star vehicle for a performance. You know what I mean? Right. But it's really it's a really well made one though. Hmm. I had completely forgotten that movie existed until you mentioned it earlier. See, yeah. Yeah. Um you wanna talk about Black Hawk Down? Yes, we can. Please. I kinda of was hoping you talk about nineteen seventeen. Talk about nineteen seventeen about... in a second, because I have a lot more to say about nineteen seventeen than I do Black Hawk Down. Ridley Scott directed it, so that's pretty awesome. He did, yeah. Really? Yeah, he did. I didn't know that. I saw that movie uh, my parents uh had DVD had like a one of those big old cases of DVDs 
that you'd flip mm-hmm. through as a kid. And uh, I just remember seeing it one day because I was like 13 or 14. And for some reason, we didn't, uh, I didn't have anything to watch. I don't think we had internet at the time. And so I was mm-hmm. like, well, let me look at a bunch of these DVDs that I've never watched. And Black Hawk Down was one of them. And I remember really enjoying it. But I don't remember too, too much about it, except for the fact that Black Hawk does go down. It does go down, yes. <laughs> it Indeed, <definitely> yes. <laughs> and it goes down in a spectacular fashion. Um, yeah, I thought this movie was like really, really tense and like really, I thought it had good character building and all that kind of stuff. I thought it was really, really good. I haven't seen it in a while, though, but I do remember liking it enough to put it on this list. I will say it's one of like my favorite movie posters ever and like it's really subtle it is a really cool poster yeah just it, josh hartnett's character who's not in enough stuff anymore by the way he used to be kind of a big deal and now he's not really in anything but he um but yeah it's just he's just sitting there and like the look on his face is kind of hard to really grasp what it is you know it's like he's in shock almost like it's just really it's really powerful but it's really simple at the same time and as a kid before i even saw it i was like that looks interesting. Like as a kid, I looked at the VHS and was like, "Oh, that looks that looks neat." What kid thinks a VHS looks neat, right? <laughs> so that's how good the movie is. <laughs> wow, that's neat. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty neat. I, I'm just picturing baby Luke. <laughs> that's so neat. <laughs> <laughs> that's accurate. That's what happened. <laughs> that's but I was that was the same reason I watched it when I was like 12 or 13. I just remember seeing right. the DVD and I was like, "Wow, that that DVD cover looks pretty solid." I'm interested. I watched it on Netflix my I first would, time. I watch on Netflix because I'm a cool oh, Gen Ray, Z. I watch Netflix. Sorry. Sorry, I just won't say it next time. Go ahead. <laughs> Damn it. Never mention Netflix. <laughs> so you know how we feel about Netflix. <laughs> Guys, gosh. <laughs> yeah, so, I... Uh, not, 1917, anybody? Yeah, talk about 1917 without spoilers because Tristan doesn't watch war movies but really wants to. So 1917 is by far my favorite war movie mainly because of one scene. And that scene, for those that don't know, the movie is about two soldiers going to find another company of men who is about to attack the Germans. But they do not know that they are walking into a trap so they have to go and warn them. And the entire movie is them going on this grueling adventure through war-torn France, I believe. And at the end of the movie, they finally reach this company of soldiers. And there is one soldier among them. I think he's like the chaplain or something like that. And he's standing and singing the old folk song, Wandering Stranger. Uh, Or sorry, Wayfaring Stranger. Wayfaring Stranger. And the camera is panning along all of these soldiers faces and they are literally just kids like i wouldn't be surprised if like some of the actors that they got to fill in as extras in that scene are like 15 or 16 and the reason i like it so much is it was the first movie to ever make me like truly hit home for me how young most men who die in war actually are and that was a really poignant scene yeah that's um i i, I feel that honestly for a lot of war movies especially um i feel the same way in saving private ryan like mm-hmm. like i couldn't imagine being oh, yes. one of those dudes in those boats <laughs> same thing with like the scene you just said <clears throat> i will say that um the reason i like this more than dunkirk because to me they're for the most part you know the style and the presentation and like the sound editing and the effects and stuff is the main purpose for the most part, just like with Dunkirk, like there's not really much characterization. Um, and that's the point. But the reason I like this movie so much more than Dunkirk is because this movie has actually a lot to say, like Tyler just said. Now, I definitely think that was the point of that scene, right? So it's not only really cool visually and um, the sound is awesome and, you know, it can be entertaining and tense to watch, but it also has a lot to say about war and like how people who are super young get sucked into it and die right dunkirk to me didn't have that that much so that's why i like this movie a thousand times more than dunkirk Uh, dunkirk does kind of low-key have that though i feel like yeah i I was just not much yeah i really don't think so so it doesn't particularly have like that particular theme to it 
But what I got from Dunkirk is that like war makes good men do bad things. And because like when you look to the boats, like with the uh, dad, the son and his friend and the soldier. That was like my favorite arc of the land, sea and air arcs in the movies was the sea. And that soldier, right? Like he was a good person, like at his core, like he had seen horrific things and it caused him to do things which ultimately led to the death of one of the people on that boat. And I thought that was a really good message that like, you know, war is not pretty and things happen that like would not happen normally. And, and like, it's kind of like you could plan and things as much as you want in war, but like, Dunkirk kind of shows that things never really go as planned. Right. And like, kind of have to like improvise a lot. I mean, I mean, I definitely get what you all are saying. I feel like a lot of that is, I feel like that death was there. Like maybe, I don't think it was, I think you all are putting, I think you all are like, analyzing it more than the filmmakers intended like what you were saying is great but i don't think that's why that scene was in the movie i think that's at least that's my opinion i didn't really get that from that scene but it's cool that you all felt that way luke i can assure you we're def- we are definitely not over analyzing a christopher nolan movie more than he over analyzed it himself i don't know man <laughs> I, I i i would agree with you for like something like tenant but right but not with this Movie. I don't know. Just, just cry about it, Luke. Gosh, I'm yes. joking. Yes, uh, Dunkirk in 1917. Both movies of which I have seen. I understand <laughs> exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. Have you not seen you're Dunkirk sure. either? Nope. Told you, man. Yeah, I was it, stretching it, it for my for my beginning. war movie list. Wow. So, <laughs> Ray, would would you consider Rogue One a war movie? Nah, I don't want to say no to her Tristan's feelings. No, you won't hurt my feelings because you're just wrong. Okay, sorry. (laughs) I think I consider it like sci-fi. Go ahead. I, 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 that's all I had to say. I, I just would consider it just like a sci-fi movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's probably out of all the Star Wars, it is definitely the one that has the most like uh the most similar themes with war movies. Kind of like the same vibe of yes, as a war same, movie. Same feel, same vibe, similar similar fights. Like anytime you see a fight in a uh, in a normal Star Wars movie, you see a big old battle. It's not really one of those you see the the hardships of war within them. But then like you watch Rogue One and all these all these dudes are just dying like crazy. And it shows you like the real dark side, pun intended, of how war can be and how war really is, especially in star Wars when it's all fun, happy lightsabers and blasters. Just... I, that, that is one of the reasons I like rogue one so much is that it, it feels so completely different than most of the star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. And I really, really loved the way they went with it. I loved how dark it was at the end. Yes. Yeah, I did too. Made, uh, made my girlfriend cry. She, Shed a little tear. Are you serious? Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot for her. it was a lot for me too. I should I... Vader scene? say what? Vader scene? No, not the Vader scene. Just the scenes of everybody dying. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Those are those are sad. Those are definitely sad. they are they were sad because like I don't know about you guys. We see about we only got these characters for one movie. Yep. I feel like I was a lot more attached to them than I was like most characters in the movies. Yeah, I can get behind that. I, I nah, didn't man. I didn't cry when like I mean Han Solo dying it threw me off guard but like when Luke died I didn't feel anything really as much as I love the Last Jedi it wasn't like I mean it was a so, it was a good send off in my opinion but it was like it like I, it didn't make me want to cry like Rogue One did because I just got attached to these characters all of a sudden. Yeah, I give I give that I give props to Rogue One for being able to pull that off to be so attached to like a handful of characters for two and a half hours, you know. 
You want to talk about Jojo Rabbit now? Oh God, yes, I love Jojo Rabbit. Ray, have you seen it? Did you say if you saw I, it? I have it, but I don't. I don't know if I will watch it. I know I like the gist of it. Um. Well, it's great, and it's probably the the best satire of World War II that you can find in recent memory. Um. Taika Waititi, he just knocks it out of the park as Hitler. Um, uh, That's I, literally a sentence that, like, if you don't know the context, you'd be like, what? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Taika, Taika Waititi, he knocks it out of the park. Scarlett Johansson does great. Roman Griffin Davis, the kid who plays JoJo, um, they're awesome. And I can't really say a whole lot without spoiling it, but, like, it definitely... It, it doesn't necessarily make light of the terrible things of the Holocaust and uh, and Hitler as a person and whatnot, but it definitely shows it from a separate perspective. And it, it is lighthearted for 75% of the movie. It's a, it's a, it's a fun, lighthearted movie, but it has, it shows what, like how war not only affects the people who are fighting it, but how it affects kids who look up to, individuals like like famous individuals in war such as jojo's obsession with hitler and him wanting to be a part of hitler's army throughout the movie all in all it's a lot of fun to watch and yeah jojo is great uh hitler's great jojo's mom is great uh even the guy who plays uh caliban in logan he's in this movie he's great Sam oh, really? Rock, I like him. He's, yeah, he, funny. He, he's not in it too long, but he's hilarious for the moments he's in it. Um, Sam Rockwell's in it. He's phenomenal. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend it. Give it a shot. And uh, yeah, it's it's actually my dad's favorite movie. One of his favorite movies now, like in recent years. My dad, he's the worst to try to sit down and get him to watch a movie. He'll just sit on his phone the entire time. And he loved it so much he watched this twice and he'll watch it anytime it's on TV. And it like blew my mind when he told me he watched it a second time. I was like, what? No way. <laughs> but uh yeah, it is ten out of ten. Who does um who does Sam Rockwell play in it? He plays just a, a general. I don't I can't remember the general's character's like, name. Like a Nazi general? Yeah, a Nazi well, general. Like general. Okay. Yeah, he's uh Captain Klenzendorf is his name that's what it says right there i will um but yeah i would definitely recommend it. I, you can oh my gosh and uh archie yates i don't know if you know who that kid is he plays a kid named yorkie and he is the funniest little fucking character <laughs> he kills me he's hilarious um but yeah i definitely give jojo rabbit a chance it is you won't be disappointed i might i might is it like a comedy? It is. It's yeah, it's yeah. it's like mostly a comedy, but it's also got okay. its dark moments because it's about World War Two and the Holocaust. But but it's mostly funny. So, um, have you guys seen like heard of the movie War Machine with Brad Pitt? I'm not. I think I have, but I don't remember. That's like the only other war comedy I've heard of. Really? Yeah. Would you say that Inglorious Bastards is a little bit of a war comedy? A little bit, yeah. I've never seen it all the way through, but the parts I've seen, it definitely seems like kind of a comedy. Gotcha. This, like, at the same time, though, there's parts of it that aren't. Yeah. Like, I would just say it kind of has that Tarantino twist. Like, every Tarantino movie can be interpreted as a comedy, but they're not all comedies. Yeah, that's true. Like, uh, like Once Upon a Time. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, Ray, tell me about Fury. I've been interested in it because I I like Shia LaBeouf a lot, and I'm he's in that movie, right? Yeah, Shia. It's got a great cast. It has um, that's like one of the best parts of the movie is the cast. It has Shia LaBeouf. I can't really remember his character's name. He has a, like his character has a weird name. It's like. Shovel or something like that. I don't remember. Is that Bible? I'm looking shovel? at it right now. Bible. It's Bible. Yeah. Uh, I said shovel. <laughs> shovel. Oh my god! I'm looking at this cast, and you're right. It does have a solid cast. It's got like Michael uh, Pena from Ant Man in it. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad Pitt's the main character, and it's like it's a it's a, like a tank crew from 
World War II, I believe, and they're in Germany, I believe. It's been a while since I've seen it, and um, basically, like, their tank breaks down, and, like, they get surrounded by German soldiers, and they just have to... It's just them, one-man crew in this tank, and they're all, like, one big family, and they have to fight their way out from all the Nazis. It's pretty cool. It's I would recommend it. Definitely. Yeah, it's got John sure. Berthenol in it too, and uh, yeah, yeah, and Logan Can't Lerman. I forgot that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This it's always caught my interest, but now I see like the full cast, and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> I will need to watch this. All those characters you could see playing a war, like a person in a war movie, except for maybe Michael Pena, but he definitely does good in it. Yeah. Like you, you, he doesn't really catch the eyes of the guy you would pick to play a soldier in a movie. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. Hmm. All right, so we've talked about all of them. Um, I think so. I think we have. Okay, cool. Well, if you have enjoyed this episode of the Cinebros Podcast, you can follow us on all of our social medias at Cinebros P on Twitter, Cinebros Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. And if you guys are not watching on YouTube, we have our own YouTube channel at Cinebros. Guys, anything else to say? Amigo. Bye. Have a beautiful time. Yeah, thank you guys for having me again. I appreciate it. Yep, thanks, Tristan, for being on. As always, it was fun. Yeah. All right, and with that, we will see you guys. Yeah.